For the first course, Philip Lowe at Las Vegas explores the world of Eastern cuisine. Using Dungeness crab, his appetizer is called chili crab, Singapore style. Then from Naples, Florida, Mark Gizal prepares the entree. It is cinnamon-crusted mahi-mahi served on a mixture of celeriac, wild mushrooms, and pecans. Then from the New Orleans area, Shane Garange offers a study in chocolate as dessert. His garnish portrays chocolate-drawn musicians with a tort-like cake and chocolate keyboard. Philip Lowe began his cooking career in Hong Kong. Over the years, he opened several popular restaurants in that city, then relocated in San Francisco, where he opened the Hong Kong Flower Lounge. He then moved to the upscale Jasmine Restaurant at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. His appetizer is chili crab, Singapore style. Most time we serve with this crab. It's come from Australia. And today we're going to use Dungeness crab. like this and then the other ingredients green onion tomato and a brand chili and egg the tomato in the dish is peeled and seeded then diced a large green onion is cut on the bias shallot is diced Then garlic is diced. The pieces of crab are deep fried in a wok. is removed, the wok is cleaned, then three tablespoons of oil go back in. The diced shallot and garlic. Then chicken broth, Chinese wine called fadu, and white vinegar go in. This is granulated sugar. The diced tomato. for about three minutes. And the ketchup.
potato starch dissolved in water is a thickener. Then three beaten eggs. The green onion goes in at the end. The dining room is normally the lead high-end restaurant in Ritz-Carlton hotels and is often overseen by high-profile chefs. In Naples, Florida, the executive chef at the dining room is Marc Guizal. He's cooked in his native France, Portugal, and London. His entree is cinnamon-crusted mahi-mahi. We are going to do um, a local mahi-mahi. It's actually the, a name for a type of dolphin. And uh, uh, this type of uh, fish uh, r range in average around 20 to 30 pound. That's actually what the fishermen caught. Uh, I think that the, one of the record around the Key West are around 100 pound. And as more we go th uh, south to South America, that type of fish turn to be larger. To have an idea, uh, since you, we see the flesh was completely different in color through the, uh, if you compare with the skin, the skin will be blue and yellowy. And actually the face is quite flat and is very, very uh, um, impressive in color. As you said, this is plain uh, ground cinnamon. You got the fish. And also one of the most important things before anything, it will be to season the fish properly. That means both sides with salt and pepper. We like to do it a bit. By the way, this is a dolphin fish, not Flipper the mammal. Actually, we like to present the first um, part is going to be cooked with the crust on. But this actually is going to be the part that's going to be presented. So that's the side we choose to put the crust in. Once again, the cinnamon is just the length on the, on the dish. It's not something that's very spicy, something that's not really sweet, but who combine a little bit of uh, uh, flavor and give this type of deep richness. A little olive oil is in the nonstick pan. We're going to put the fish skin f uh, first and crust, sorry, crust first into the pan. This way. We're not looking into having a, a blackened effect or anything. All what we're looking for is to cook uh, slowly the spice to make sure that uh, they can infuse and give a bit of uh, extra flavor to the fish. We're not looking to have something uh, blackened since the cinnamon is not uh, spicy uh, at all. In between 45 seconds to probably a, a full minute is what we are looking for. We can look through the process, as you can see. 
Bakın. For seven ounce uh, piece of mai, I will say that it's probably required something like nine, uh, seven, seven to nine minutes, depending actually this part is a bit thicker to make sure that it will be cooked. One of the way to do it is to finish it on the oven slowly. And also, as uh, like we normally do for pieces of meat, even prime beef, etc., etc. One way to treat the fish is to make sure that it's uh, uh, um, took out of the oven a bit earlier and left slowly on the side like this. It can just uh, relax, actually, in a way. And all the juices and everything can regain the normal part of the fish. Because the action of cooking, as you can see, will dry out all the outside to start and uh, will um, uh, concentrate uh, all the moisture and the blood also uh, uh, it, through the middle part of it. By letting rest uh, a little bit afterwards, uh, the, the blood, moisture and everything will be able to regain the full part and the full uh, side of the fish again. It's finished in a 350 degree oven. Okay. We like to put a little bit of olive oil again inside to make sure it doesn't stick. Oh, that goes into the oven, as we said, for probably uh, six to seven minutes and we'll take it out a little bit afterward. The base for the sauce will be juiced apples. Note that the skin is left on. This will enhance the green color. Actually, one thing was important, we don't put any salt into the sauce for the reason that the food uh, uh, keeps its freshness and it's uh, very difficult to have a balance in between the salt and the sugar. Uh, especially for a food that's been done fresh, uh, we don't add any seasoning into it. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to add, uh, I would say roughly one, two, and three spoon of cream, okay, as it is now. It's going to be mixed, i give you a, an idea. And we are going to boil slowly the sauce on the side. Yeah. The fish will be presented on a mixture of chopped chives, both diced and pureed celery root, chopped mushrooms, and crushed pecans. The idea is to do a type of support for the fish. use the trimmings of celeriac to make sure that we have a, um, a perfect uh, and, st and stable but also a tasty and moist garnish. Okay. That's a so at that stage the fish goes on the top. We can also use the rest of our garnish. I'd like to put a little bit of pecan nuts. And also our dry apple. This. 
And the sauce has been boiled and repassed and colorized and light will be the last added to the plate. As we said in France, voila, this is our traditional and regional uh, mai, crusted with uh, cinnamon and apple sauce. The popularity of Zoe's Bakery has more or less mirrored the population explosion on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain. The talented owner is Shane Garange, whose dessert this time demonstrates his skill with chocolate. Not one in a thousand home cooks will try it. He calls it all that jazz. A tort layer is started by soaking a slice of white cake with Bailey's Irish cream, a layer of chocolate ganache, and a layer of coffee buttercream. Soak it again with the Baileys and the syrup. It's actually more Baileys than it is syrup. And you just repeat the ganache. The three layered tort is covered with the coffee buttercream and refrigerated for about two hours or until firm. We're going to Take the cake, trim off the side so we can get a true surface, it'll be a lot cleaner. And we're gonna make a, what we're gonna do is to make a wedge. A little vegetable oil is added to melted chocolate. It will keep the chocolate from splintering after coating the tort wedge. And it will cut a lot easier. And we're going to coat the whole piece of cake. The cake is refrigerated until set. To make the garnish for the dessert, we're going to take a picture of a jazz musician. You can take different pictures or draw a picture. And then this is a um, piece of cellophane from an overhead projector. I'm going to lay that straight over the drawing. Then with chocolate, we're going to trace the drawing. Trace around. The chef uses melted white chocolate for highlights. white and dark chocolate mixed. Okay, and we're gonna put that to one side to set, somewhere cool. They actually free themselves real easy from this, and then for the musicians, you can do different instruments, playing different instruments, and as many as you want to garnish. A piano keyboard is fashioned from bars of white and dark chocolate. Just spot a 
Melted chocolate is used as the glue for the keyboard. Stop chocolate spread out, cut out. Wherever you can find space, let it sit up. 